Hello my friends and welcome to Paulina Art. Today I'm going to be doing a much requested video and it's going to be on a blurry or watercolor alcohol drop effect. It's going to be a background for this composition of Siberian irises. Now these are the colors that I'm going to be using on my flowers and it's going to be the same colors that I'm going to be using on the background. I did a little sketch of my flowers and these are the colors that are on my palette and that I'm going to be using on this painting. So I'm going to try to in incorporate all the colors on the background. Now I don't just put the colors. I look at the colors of my flowers and I'm going to use my watercolory effect to showcase my flowers. And as you can see in here, there's a lot of purple in there. Actually, the color I'm using is eggplant. So on this area, I'm going to use mainly oranges and yellows, the oranges and yellows that are on the flowers. So I'm going to be showcasing the eggplant. And at the bottom, there's going to be more green. So I can use more of my eggplant and greens at the bottom. I did this sketch so you have an idea how my flowers are going to be. As you know, I like to sketch by dividing in my mind the paper in four and then just sketching the flowers where I want it to go within those quadrants. Now, once my background is done, I'm going to trace these flowers in there. I'm using watercolor paper today because I want this painting to have a watercolory effect. And I have put some, some painter's tape behind here just because I don't want to mess my other sheets with color. So we, we see where our flowers are going to go. So mainly up here I'm going to have my yellows and down here I'm going to have more oranges and purples. Now as you can see I have mixed my colors with a little bit of white to create a lighter version of the colors I'm going to use. And the only tool I'm going to be using for now is this painting sponge. And later on, I'm going to be using this makeup brush. I'm going to list everything below. This is Real Techniques, Real Techniques Crease Brush. Okay, my friends, I'm going to start by dipping my sponge, which is wet, and then I dried it a bit with um, a towel because I don't want it super wet and I'm going to start with a lighter version of the colors and I'm going to start doing here my yellows and I'm just going to move like this in my watercolor paper. Now you can do this on canvas. I use this often on canvas but today I'm using watercolor paper because I want my final painting to be very loose and watercolory. The backgrounds are very important. I find they are just as important as the main subject in a different way, of course. They are supposed to complement and showcase the background. Okay, I'm going to move on to my orange. I'm using a cleaner side of the sponge and I'm going to add a little bit of orange in there. So you can see I just moved swiftly across my paper. This kind of background really makes this blurry effect background really showcases the main flower. It makes it almost a 3D effect. We're going to put a little bit of orange down here. We can put a little bit of purple as well in the corner. I'm not going to put any purple in this area because this is where my flowers are going to be. So I'm going to put a little bit of purple around here. It's a, almost a little bit too dark, so I'm going to go with the cleaner side of the sponge. And just going to put a little bit at the top here. On the top here, I'm going to put a little bit of purple up there. And some at the bottom here. This is where all my leaves are going to be, all the branches. <coughs> Don't worry if it's not looking 
absolutely perfect because it will look really pretty once you're done. Now I'm gonna to move to my light green. I'm not gonna add a little bit at the bottom here. I'm gonna add a little bit of the green in here and some in here. The thing to keep in mind is the placement of the colors. Are they gonna enhance your painting? Basically, that's what we're looking to do. We're, ba we're looking to enhance what's gonna be our main subject. That's why it's important to pay a little bit of attention when you're doing this. Then we're really gonna make the colors pop on our main subject. Now at the bottom, I can do a little bit more vibrant orange, which I'm gonna do right in here. And a little bit of pops of vibrant, vibrant orange down there. And maybe, maybe up here too. Maybe up here, sorry. Maybe up here I want some vibrant orange as well. And there's a white space in there. And I think I'm gonna go with maybe a light, very light purpley in there. Okay, if there's white spaces like that, it's okay. This is how my canvas is looking now. I call it my canvas, you know, this is um, watercolor paper, but that's okay. Now with the cleaner side of the sponge, you can go around and blend it a little bit more. And now we're gonna move on to our brush, to our brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my brush, remove all the excess water and pick up a little bit of white. And I'm gonna try to use just a little bit of white. I don't want a lot of white in there. And I'm gonna go in places where I feel I can blend where it, the sponge didn't really blend at all. I can blend a little bit and add some white in those areas. Picking up my white and just moving across the canvas like this. You can work on this until you're you're really happy but I've learned not to worry so much. I The more I paint the more I want my paintings to be nice and loose and not, not worry so much. But that's how you blend in the colors just by adding some of the white. We can blend a little bit in here. I'm gonna add more white at the bottom in here. Another thing you can do that looks really nice is add little circles, different size of circles. This is what it will give the watercolor alcohol drop effect. And it will diffuse also some of the areas where you might want to have a little bit more, you want it to be a little bit more blended. I like it nice and soft like this. If you want, you can add a little bit of darker. Basically, you work it out with your brush until you're happy. Now, if you don't have one of these brushes, you can use your sponge. Your sponge, the one that you use to do the colors around here, it works very good as well. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the dark orange. So I want to darken maybe some areas, but not where the flowers are gonna be, but maybe around here in the corners. I can add a little bit of more intensity in some places. Maybe at the bottom here. Doing this kind of background is, I find is a lot of fun. Okay, I'm rinsing my brush. I'm gonna pick up some yellow now. And I might just play a little bit with the yellow up here and down here. Okay, let's add a little bit more white. I feel it needs a little bit more of the white. I'm going to add some white around here. If you want more circles, you can add more circles. 
and blend some areas. I'm going to add a few more little circles up here. Now, because I'm working on watercolor paper, it's going to dry really fast. Watercolor paper dries much faster than a, than a canvas. So what I can do, I can check if I'm happy with my background just by placing my flowers, my flowers on top of it, which I'm going to do in a minute here my sketch that I have on my tracing paper and I'm going to see how that looks. That's where my flowers are going to look on top. Most of my dark eggplant flowers are going to be right in there and they are going to contrast beautifully with the background. And this is my friends, how you create this kind of background. Once this is dry, I'm going to transfer my flowers in here and we're going to paint them together. I'm going to attach the video of the flowers as well so you can see both things. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this video and you want to see more content from me, you know what to do. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.